carried. The next item, sorry, is the um, uh, Banks Peninsula Community Board meeting. And as Pam is coming to the table, can I just say it's been drawn to my attention that Pam Richardson, Chair of the Council's Banks Peninsula Community Board, is receiving an Outstanding Contribution Award from Environment Canterbury later today. This award is presented in recognition of people who've made an outstanding contribution to the Canterbury region. So I, on behalf of all of the councillors, would like to take this opportunity to congratulate Pam on receiving this award and to take um, a moment to recognise all that she has done and continues to do for the city um, and the peninsula. And I'd like you all to join with me in um, congratulating Pam on her award. <laughs> usually get a chance to catch you out, Pam, so that was great. I thought it might have gone incognito. <laughs> no chance. Mm. Look, um, I just need to, I'm all frizzled now, or frazzled, or I need to, to get my props uh, um, out on the table and be aware of those ten minutes uh, that are, that are um, clocks ticking over. But you've got our report in front of us, uh, front of you once again. There's a varied range of issues, and we've got a, a huge number of projects underway. No part A's today. So if we just move to this, this first one, the head-to-head -head walkway. Now this is an absolutely amazing project that's going along um, in the inner harbour of of, um, of Littleton Harbour. It's a, a team of enthusiastic, enthusiastic volunteers. Now they're partnering with um, council rangers and they are um, developing sections of the head-to-head -head walkway. Each, each, each section has a different um, group of landowners um, and community uh, actually working with it. So there's Cass Bay, Diamond Harbour, Diamond Harbour Community Association, Governors Bay, Littleton Harbour Bo Business Association, project, but there's a whole lot of them um, there that, that work alongside the rangers to make this, this, this a successful project. And I just love some of the work that they do. For example, a helicopter dumped a pile of shingle, or a pile of shingle was dumped somewhere, and the community actually picked up their buckets, filled their buckets, and um, laid the shingle on the tracks. Um, so it's an innovative way of doing it. Um, you don't pick up the weeds, you actually put a, a bit of shingle on a track. So just absolutely wonderful. And the community is um, now recruiting more volunteers. So the consultation is actually open at the moment um, on the Orton Bradley to Charteris Bay section. So there's been a lot of challenges at, at getting that together. But it will be an amazing walkway when it's totally completed. Um, and the volunteers and the walkers, they actually really appreciate what, they've, what they're going to have at the end of it. The next one is this hardy old annual. And I have here, I've got props. I'm going to give something to you, Leanne, too. Um, which have, we've, we've had a number from our community continually coming to the board talking about the level of maintenance on our reserves, parks and um, in amenity areas um, and that we're not up to a standard, not meeting that standard. It's been, it's the board's priority, it's been on the top of the list for quite some time. We have been working things through with staff but we're not achieving the outcomes that we're, um, that we're, um, we're expecting. So the contractors have said that they will attend our board meetings. Um, we're investigating and mapping uh, um, areas under contract to identify responsibilities and gaps in the service. Staff are going to follow, are following up with extra work um, in areas, and we have a park ranger that's been appointed. Great news that it's been filled. And parks will monitor contracts closely and report to the board by monthly. Now, we haven't seen any of those yet come to the table, so they need to come to the table urgently. Um, you know that the community concerns at the same time the community concerns are continuing. A staff is very aware of what the issues are, but um, you know perhaps our expectations are too high. 
Uh, and um, once again, as I said in February, this, this resident came again about long grass, long grass, overflowing rubbish bins, vegetation overhanging tracks. Communities around the peninsula continue to experience similar issues. So we need to find a way of resolving it. Perhaps it does need some more funding at it. Perhaps we need to look at the weeds and, and how we're actually controlling those weeds. It's just an ongoing issue that we need to, um, to be uh, involved in. And we look forward as a board to understanding more about the contracts. And it was, was made aware to us that the, the, um, the staff would come and talk with us about the contracts um, and would be able to identify those gaps. That hasn't happened. So we just ask that the boards be involved at early stages and that we continue to um, get pressure from our community. It's incredible pressure. Every time you go somewhere, someone talks to you about it. So the next one is about um, the, the cruise ships in Akaraya. Fortunately, those um, portacoms are not there any longer, but we've got a, a larger, a larger uh, portable unit in the town that's being emptied. Um, it takes 1,000 litres of, of, um, of waste, is um, emptied daily, um, almost. Um, and can causing con considerable concerns to, concerns to the community. So we know that the, the cruise ship season is being managed well. We've got an Akara, we've got a cruise ship working group that's resolving a number of issues and they're doing a great job for us. We're working with Christchurch New Zealand around visitor planning. We need to make sure that our infrastructure um, is, is, is appropriate to deal with all the tourists that we're getting. And so we're looking forward to working with NZ, Christchurch NZ to hear what those numbers are so that we can actually inform our community um, that, yes, we have um, resolved some of those issues and lightened the load, uh, roll on the, the, um, the new cruise ship uh, berth. So the last one is, is um, about reserve management committees, about partnering with the council. We've got 15 committees across Banks Peninsula, um, and they all identify their priorities, and they all make um, submissions to the long-term plan, and we've um, had a considerable amount of, of um, capital funding granted to a number of those groups that are working away. And so now that staff are now back working with those communities to plan those projects, which strengthen our communities, enhance the reserves across the peninsula. So um, there's a number of park rangers that do an extraordinary job across the peninsula to, to work with our communities, and we really value those. So um, just... Um, the top priority is managing our, our um, reserves. It really is. Um, we do need to, to get a better look at things and, and understand what's going on. So, Leanne, I will give you this. It came from a community member, um, and she's written a wee note with it. Um, so here we are. She'll be pleased, and we're pleased, to be able to share this information with you. I'll just, um, I'll leave it on the, perhaps I'll leave it on the, I'll give it to Joe. <laughs> All right, bring it up. Well, I, she has sent a lot of information in um, about her, her issues. Um, it's about managing parks better, about looking after the trees that are in our parks and things, about looking after our facilities in our parks, our seats, our tables, and making sure that they're, they're, they're well looked after. The painting of rails along here, the painting of guardrails in, in parks and reserves too. So there's a lot of things there if you need to raise the profile. Yeah. But, um, and I was keen to, to receive this, one, one because it's just to acknowledge a member of the community that's gone to an awful lot of trouble to document um, the concerns, um, but also to re-emphasise um, Snaps and Solve is an app that you can use on your phone, and um, it's, it's been pretty good. I mean, I've had really good responses, and I, I mean, it's not, you don't even have to put your name on it. It's not... Mm. Um, it's not something that you get preferential treatment for. Um, potholes I've stopped and photographed and, and sent through. Um, branches that have come off trees. You know, pe pe it's re a really good um, app to have for those that have got smartphones. Snap, send, solve. So sometimes you have to be persistent. Yes, to make sure it gets done. You do. But nowadays you can ask for a service request number and you can follow it online. Yes, and you need to. That's yes. a little bit of information about those photographs. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Andrew. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and yeah, thanks for passing on that information, Pam, that came to our board meeting from a you know very engaged and, and clearly very passionate residents. And th those pictures are, are Corsair Bay. 
but I'm very aware that the generic of what we're seeing around other parts of the peninsula and indeed other parts of the city. But wh what are you wanting to achieve as regards the maintenance? Is, something, is there something you're wanting for the board that we're not getting? Is there some action that requires to be taken that's not happening at the moment? You know, we've talked about the report back from the contractors, which is yet to occur, and we've talked about the... Um, the, the new park ranger who is now in place, which you know took some time for that to happen, given that it was a decision that was made in um, June last year as part of the long-term plan. Is there something more that you're wanting to see um, to, to resolve these issues? Well, the other one was staff will investigate ma mapping maintenance areas under contract to identify responsibilities and gaps in the service. We need to see that, that in, in place. And then it also talks about pass, park staff will monitor contracts closely and report to the board bi-monthly. So none of that has actually happened since we asked for it. We need to get that in place and show that it works. Hmm. Just one further question on a different matter. The, the cruise ships in Akaro was one thing you mentioned. Um, you obviously spend a lot of time on the ground in the Akaro community, yes. you're very well connected with people there. Do you believe that either we as Council or Christchurch NZ um, should be communicating either better or differently with the community um, so that we know that, so that the community know that the good work that's going on is actually happening and what the effects of yes, it are actually to be? Yes, we do. Yes, it's, um, it's vital for our community that they get some feedback. We've got a, a cruise working group that's working away on things. We've had a, um, a seminar from Christchurch NZ um, about destination management. We need to see some of those figures coming back to the community of showing how many cruise ships there will be next year, what we've done to allay, what they've done to allay it. Uh, you know how everybody's working together to resolve those issues for our community. It's too many. 8,000 people off two cruise ships one day in, in January this year, possibility of 8,000, certainly wasn't that many in the town, but there is a possibility with two cruise ships sitting out in the harbour. That's the whole size of Banks Peninsula on the harbour. <laughs> so we would welcome some feedback from Christchurch NZ and, the, and, the, and others that are working on it. Uh, Aaron, then Tim. Yeah, just quickly, Pam, you showed us the head-to-head -head walkway before, yes. and I think that'll become a standalone tourist attraction for the region when it's finished. Do we have a finished date, and how long does it take, or is the anticipated walk time for the whole journey, and is there accommodation stops along the way? Look, just a little Aaron, one. those are an enormous number of questions you've asked there. Um, I don't think that any of that is, uh, there's not a finished date. It's an ongoing project. It's quite a challenge. For some of it goes through private land on, on uh, paper roads. Um, no, there's no accommodation, but there is a brochure out on the head-to-head -head walkway, so we should, I'm not quite sure whether there's a link to the City Council webpage, but there is a, a, um, a brochure on the head-to-head -head walkway. So the estimated time to walk it? It's not a one-day walk, is it? Would be no. No, you'd probably come and stay in um, perhaps Diamond Harbour and have a few days in Diamond Harbour and go out for walks over a number of days. we got Tim. Thank you. Um, Pam, the, the cruise ships have been coming to Akaroa for a number of years now, and we're still, it seems, at this, the, the, the start is no different to now. So what do you think the missing links are? Because, you know, we, we talk, you've got a group, you, you're all talking, but it seems there's talking, but there still seems to be a gap, because here we are in 2019. There's well, still issues. I think the, the, the issue is the increasing numbers. You know, before we had the, um, before we had the earthquake, there were a few ships, only a few cruise ships. Then there was, I think there might have been about 60 in the first year, or might have been 30 or 60 in the first year, and since then, it's, it's now up to, you know, 90, late, high 90s. Um, and next year there was looking at high, high, high hundreds. So would one um, of the issues be that a, a better process on getting them off the ships and on the buses and out back no, out the No, look, world? there's been amazing work done with traffic management. There's a whole lot of things. The City Council have been superb in supporting the cruise ship industry to get to continue with their operations. It's the impact of those number of buses, the red buses, the traffic that's on the roads, where the buses come to pick up the cruise ship passengers from. You know, if you've got... A, you know, 800 or whatever it is, passengers coming off the boats, the, the, the buses pick them up from down there in front of the shops, in front of the hotels. So it's the, it's the idling of the buses and, and the things that go on around, turning buses around, getting people out of town, there's a little bus that goes through town. We have really tried, 
Everybody has tried their, their best to get the best outcome, but the infrastructure is not there to support that number of tourists. We haven't got the toilets. We've got the rubbish collections going well, um, but it's just the number of people in the town for so long a time over that summer period when there's already other visitors. So it's, it's, we need to balance out and um, look at them going back to Littleton again so that we've got half the number or less I don't know what the appropriate number well, is, but we need that, to work it out. I mean, it's just a Sorry, time. but you know, we've, we've come to time, and I, I know that there are a number of people that are waiting to get to the full reports after we've done the community board report, so I'm sorry. Um, thank you very much for your um, presentation today. Thanks. And congratulations once more. Thanks. Uh, could, uh, sorry, would someone like to move and second that the report be received, Andrew? Seconded by Dion, put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's